Hey there, Evil Dragon here! It's been quite a while since I made a video like this, but, well, you might have seen it in my last videos. I was probably looking a bit tired, um, mainly because I really was tired. Um, so I probably was a bit burned out. Not really a burnout, but probably close before that, so I had to slow down at the beginning of this year. And uh, while it's hard to keep yourself motivated if you try to fix the cases and, and everything else and well, the companies you try to work with won't help you and you just can't move forward because they just ignore what you're saying. And then you've got a half-finished case which isn't working properly. You try to do the hardware but without the proper case, what would be the point of that? So yeah, this pretty much uh, dragged me down a bit and I had to slow down and as you can see now I'm I'm fine I'm back with full strength basically and this is because we moved to a new company for the case uh, early this year and now they're moving ahead full speed and they're doing a fine job they're very enthusiastic about that and uh, they proposed a lot of fixes already within a few weeks of time and this is much much more than uh, we uh, had from the former company. Um, well, one of the main guys behind the new case team is uh, has even registered to the forums because he loves it there. So say hello to Azul. Greetings from my video here. If you spot him on the boards, he's the one uh, mostly communicating with me and working on the plastic. I'm in mostly daily contact with him, which is great. I've uh, visited him a few times. I slept at his place while I was with visiting the company. So. Yeah, that is really, really promising and it gives a lot of motivation so we can finish the Pyra now and move on. So yeah, I've assembled nine prototypes now with the, well, still old cases, so they have not the properly working shoulder buttons. But I will show you um, some new developments we have here. I will uh, show you the tester on the prototype, I will show you the first boot on the prototype. I still have boards for, I think, nine or ten more. Um, but I want to wait with these until we've got the fixed shoulder buttons and the fixed cases. So the ones I assembled right now are for developers who don't need a perfect case. They just need a working hardware uh, and all need to have the same hardware so they can finish the development of the software. And after that I will assemble the prototypes for the prototype pre-orders. Well, and on the same time, we are already moving ahead with the production. We are trying to get the uh, lead times for the parts that we still need. Yeah, and of course we need to test the prototypes and give feedback on what's working, what's not working. I don't expect all the prototypes to work fully, uh, simply because for the fact that the reason you do such prototypes is to find out where there are some issues, where the uh, production company needs to uh, check what's working, what's not working, where they need to make sure uh, that the machine is properly set up. Well, that's it for now. So let's take a look at the case and let's take a look at the prototype. If you follow the news and you know that the case has a few uh, physical issues, but not that many, thank God, and cosmetical issues mainly like these here which they are currently trying to fix. Um, the biggest, biggest physical issue is basically the shoulder buttons, which you know are, weren't that well. Well, they started with the first quick fix, which is um, adding a spring to the lower shoulder buttons, um, which is easy to assemble. You just put it in and, oh, yeah, it's hard if you try to uh, stay in focus and assemble it right away. Where are we? Where's the focus? There's the focus, yeah like this and if we put the PCB in here that feels a lot nicer than before simply by adding the spring. Um, Ascaros has it already included in his Pyra. Um, it's a pretty simple fix but it really really works well so far. Um, what will be totally changed are the upper shoulder buttons. They don't work that well, they don't feel that well. Uh, well, and the good thing is Azul, which I mentioned before, he's working on uh, most of the plastic parts for me together with, with uh, his team. Um, he thought about different shoulder buttons and they are designing one which they will 3D print probably next week. So we will get totally redesigned shoulder button. And the good thing is 
He's also a professional or he was a professional gamer. He still plays games, but yeah, he was professional in a team with the competition and stuff like that. So he knows what shoulder buttons should feel like. So the shoulder buttons uh, will mostly be fixed soon. So let's take a look at one of these assembled prototypes I have here. And uh, so you can see how we do the test run, how far it is, and let's do first boot. So you probably want to see what's going on there, um, but I have to select the test run from the computer. So I will show you how this works. It's now connected by a serial out to the PC. If I switch it on, the PC will boot. And as you can see, it now asks for uh, Debian kernel or the hardware test, which is three. So if we start three, it will start up booting. Let's focus on the Pyra now. And here goes, it's booting, it's testing all the different stuff. Well, I know that there are some things that will fail. Um, I know for sure that the uh, WL, uh, the, the Wi-Fi test will fail. Let me zoom in here a bit. Yeah, you know, you can see. So as you can see, it first tests the barometer, the compass, the gyro, the NUP controller, the fuel gauge, the TWL4030, LED controller, now Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi has at least found the module because it's now trying to connect to the test server. But since the test server is set up uh, only at my home and I'm in my office here, it won't be able to connect. So the Wi-Fi test will fail at last. Yeah, is the router running? It's not. Now it switched all LEDs to white. Yeah, that's uh, getting me some focus here. So they're all on now and all white. Yes, they are. So I can press enter. And now we will see the test results here. As you can see, um, we've got a failure in Wi-Fi, of course. We've got a failure with uh, 4G LTE, um, which most probably is software, um, because I know the, the Wi-Fi, uh, the, the LTE modem does take a few uh, seconds to initialize and I think the timeout is not set long enough for this unit so I will probably enable it uh, as soon as the unit boots up so that for the test run later it will work but that's something we are working on not sure why the TWL4030 failed might be an issue with the hardware it could also be that uh, there's some issue with the driver right now um, which is something I will have to uh, look into then it's the Pyra version Pyra handheld 5.2 it's the latest board right now. Well, some critical tests have failed. Please press enter to start the input tester. And then we will. you will see something that you will probably know from the uh, Pandora. Hmm? Didn't I press it properly? Yeah, now here. Ah, two times. I think that's a bug in the script. Um, that's the good old Pandora tester. Let me get a bit up here. Just um, expand it for the Pyra. So. Of course, you can see here that you've pressed all buttons. Here's the one. Here's some two buttons aren't working on this one, which is something I will need to look into. Might be that uh, the contact on the key mat isn't properly. Then we've got up, down, left, right. Um, yeah, we've got the knob, which you can move properly in all directions. So if you've ever seen that um, test up with the Pandora and you can see how nice and smoothly I can move that here in all directions, then you know it's a lot better. And the click works as well. Same for the right knob, of course, you can move it in all directions, a lot smoother than on the Pandora. And that's it. Then we've got these buttons. We've got the shoulder buttons also working. Ah, oh, focus, focus. It's really hard trying to do the test while keeping it focused here. All the other ones. Well, and that's it, touchscreen. And the lid sensor doesn't work for me right now, but not even with a strong magnet. So, oh, enter, I forgot enter. Um, so that's probably a, a software setup because I think the soft the, the setup changed at some time and we haven't adapted to it. So that's a test run. If I now quit it, it should start to flash onto the EMMC. Of course, that will happen on the final uh, tester, which will also be delivered to the company who produces it to global components. But right now um, I simply quit because we haven't implemented the flashing to EMMC yet. So now that we just did the first test run, let's boot into the unit and see how the first boot wizard will fare. 
Um, it's not yet optimized for the screen size, so the text will be really, really tiny on screen. I hope you can even read it. If not, I will zoom in. Here you go. So, welcome to the Pyra. Start now. So, calibrate touchscreen. No, I don't have a stylus with me and it should be pre-calibrated. So, my name is um, Evil Dragon. Yes, I'm not. I'm aware that's not my full name, but still. Um, yeah, Evil Dragon is my username. My password is very, very secure with one letter. Encrypt home, dear. So you had already a Debian offers to encrypt your home directory. This is not what I want. Um, yeah, my pen, my Pyra has the name Evil Dragon Pyra. So okay. Um, enable firewall. No, I don't need a firewall right now. Yeah, I know I'm very very secure. Now it lo loads up the time zone data, which takes a few seconds here. Um, will be faster if I run it from an EMMC. But right now um, I have only got a, a normal SD card and they're not even a fast one, it's just a normal one. So Europe is fine, so forward. Mm, did I press it properly? Oh yeah, it just probably takes a second as well. Oh no, it didn't reach it. So no, I'm not from Amsterdam, I'm from where is it? Berlin. Let's go with Berlin. At least that's closest to me from all the countries in there. Forward. So, my local. Um, yeah, I don't need all locals. Oh, I'm fine with, with standard English right now, so yeah. But yeah, it already has, well, we've got more space than on the Pandora. The Pandora had 500 ref megabyte of uh, storage space we've got 32 gigabyte here so of course we can do uh, different locals and languages on the pyra okay so we're done that's it that's the first boot result right now no fancy boot screen right now it's uh, just showing you linux it automatically powers down so let's power it up again and see it boot into the operating system we already had a few videos about the operating system so i will not show you a lot here but something else that's uh, that might be interesting for you. So here you go. Still booting from the SD card, of course. Nothing on the internal memory, and it's now asking for login. Uh, now I'm user Evil Dragon. Evil D was my first try, but I uh, forgot to press the record button on the camera, so I had to restart the first boot wizard. Login. Well. And there you are, should boot up the uh, the GNOME uh, Mate desktop right now. Haven't tried it, but looks good. That was the first boot up. Here you go. You've got the menu here with a few pre-installed applications. Firefox, uh, yeah, I think we've got GIMP and stuff like that installed. So, it is actually running on the real system here. Working nicely, touchscreen is working fine and reacts really, really well to even light touches. Nubs are working perfectly, going left and right and up and down. Unit basically works, so this is the first test. I will do the test run with all the prototypes I have at home um, and see, well, if more of them fail with the uh, TWL, then you can be sure that, uh, oh, I started GIMP. Um, then you can be sure that uh, there is an issue in the software tester, but that's now possible that we have multiple units because then you can easily uh, do the test runs and know whether it fails or not. So the Pyra is coming along well now, hopefully. And I received a bit of a surprise from Nikolaus, which is this thing here. You can see we've got a display here, two speakers there, small navigation buttons here and there. And this is the back side. So basically what this is, um, you know that, that Nikolaus produced the GTA 04, maybe, which was the uh, old phone using Linux. And of course, since we now have um, a PCB, a, a CPU board that can be used with very different use cases, he started to uh, design a Pyra phone. Let me get a bit closer here so you can see a bit more. So. 
you know that SD card slot. We've got two more micro SD card slots A and the SIM card. This is just a physical dummy, so there's no module installed here, but you can connect an external antenna, battery, normal USB port, a USB, uh, micro USB port, HDMI, headphones. So basically the same features the Pyro has, just as a uh, the size of a phone. And well, there are also dip switches on here, which allows you to disable Wi-Fi, GPS, the modem, whatever you want. So you can lose it, use it with Linux. It doesn't have a keyboard, so it, it lacks the keyboard the Pyra has, but everything else will be there. And it will also have some more features, which the Pyra doesn't have, um, but more about that later. So this is just a physical dummy and don't worry, it won't get in the way of the Pyro. The Pyro is still um, the top priority here. But as Nikolaus is finished with the hardware design of the Pyro, so it's only the case and me handling the mass production, well, he took the time and, and worked on a small PCB, which can also uh, be uh, used with a, with a Pyro CPU board. So you now have the CPU board. Uh, for the CPU board, you now have a phone, which will be hopefully finished sometime. Um, you've got the Pyra and you've got a, a stationary board where you can plug in the CPU board and have a little mini PC like the Raspberry Pi just using the OMIP5. So yes, we're getting there. Um, more and more stuff is coming. But as said, don't worry, this will not get in the way of the Pyra. The Pyra is what I'm working on. This is what Nikolaus is working on. Um, but now first let's test all the prototypes, see what needs to be, well, not what needs to be fixed. The hardware itself is fine, but uh, how many failures the prototypes have. And let's see that we can get this little thing out in the wild. So um, you can play with it and run, uh, do nice things with it. Heat might be a bit of an issue. Um, well, a bit of, I've tried to run it for 15 minutes with um, the heatsink installed uh, with full load. The heatsink gets warm. The battery temperature rises to 45 degrees. So yes, you can really feel it in here that the unit gets warm, but same happens on my smartphone or any smartphones I've ever tried if I run it with full CPU power. But the battery stays below the critical 50 degree temperature, which is pretty good. So um, you can run it for an extended period of time with uh, full CPU power, but I would recommend it. So uh, maybe clog it down. That would be a lot better also um, battery wise. And as mentioned, with one gigahertz, the Pyro will be a lot faster than the Pandora already. So yes, it will be a neat gimmick. Uh, let's see what we can do and let's hope for new and updated CPU boards later on. But now we've got the Pyra, we will have a stationary board and at some time we might have a phone. So that's it from for me from today. I will test the Pyra prototype boards tonight or the prototypes are built tonight. We'll report back and well, See you soon. Bye.